Six AI um, is, is a really unique organization. We uh, we're an e-clinical company, or we consider ourselves a SaaS e-clinical software company, and um, we utilize very unique data set to actually address problems within the clinical trial process. So. To understand that, you know, this is where we find ourselves as a category creator, as a clinical trial acceleration software, right? We're able to be used and leverage this very unique set of data that comes from structured and unstructured data coming out of the EMR systems from both, you know, major hospital systems, but also the peripheral hospital systems that surround us. So it's both major academic and community hospital centers. But we leverage that in multiple different ways to address multiple different processes within the clinical trial, you know, continuum that allows us to accelerate from early in study design to execution of the study and then beyond. Really what sets us apart is one, there have been other companies that have tried to do this but have failed, right? So we've taken a unique approach to this. We actually went out and sold into the hospital environment first and gained interest on their side to allow us to access the data and to use this type of information within the clinical trial process. And then about two years or so, I was brought on to actually grow us into the life sciences part of the business and really start addressing you know, industry clinical trials in a new way, right? Leveraging the data that's coming from the hospitals and allowing that to use that on behalf of the sponsor to recruit patients. Our data comes from, you know, um, what, what I consider partner organizations, major hospital systems that have both academic centers and then community hospitals and practices surrounding that. We integrate directly with their EMR systems, pulling information that is not only in the structured code base data, but all the, the physicians and providers notes, the pathology reports, the genomics reports. So we pull data from all the different sources and then use our proprietary technology, which starts really kind of a, a layered AI approach, where we start with a, a um, purpose-built natural language processing application, which allows us to surface that information, and then a very unique way of how we actually review that information and query that data. So we build the expertise into the application. So if you're looking for, let's say, prostate cancer, all the other terms and colloquialisms and, and associated terms um, you know, and, and codes that are part of prostate cancer are already surfaced directly in it. It doesn't require somebody to come in and say it should be this and that and this. We actually allow it all to be included and then exclude out the pieces that you think might, you know, create a little less precision in the questioning you're asked. Right? And then on top of that, we look at the context between the concepts or the medical concepts that we're looking at, and then we contemporalize that data. So really what we can do is look at a patient journey to give the highest precision possible when matching patients. And matching is really at the heart of everything that we do. We, un we, we used all this unstructured data to allow us to match. In the sense, you ask a question and we find which patients match to those particular questions you're asking. Whether it be inclusion and exclusion criteria for a trial, or whether it be you know, looking for a control arm population or trying to understand you know, how frequently this adverse event or severe adverse event occurs in a particular population. It's interesting, most people look at us and think that we, we really recruit patients into the trial, right? And recruitment is one of the key things that we do, but it isn't everything that we do. Um, we're starting to see success within the recruitment process, but we're also starting to see a lot more interest further upstream, right? Designing better studies, understanding that a particular criteria may directly affect the population of patients. Using that to then identify how many actual patients are there and where exactly are there, so you're selecting the right sites, and so we're moving upstream but we also have some interest downstream as well in the execution of the study where we're starting to see customers move more for you know let's say safety detection or safety signal detection and pharmacovigilance analysis looking to see how often does this event occur in a very very precise population of patients which is something that cannot be done today so particularly if you're looking for a rare event. There's a lot of different things within the clinical trial process that we can really address. Um, but even beyond just addressing the clinical trial and the needs within the clinical trial, we can look at 
post-trial, in that para-approval process, to actually find additional patients who had responded or fit within a category that had responded during that, the previous trial. But even beyond that, we can start to see the use of the system for identifying precision matching of patients for treatment profiles, right? They, they, they specifically meet these criteria who best responded to a trial. So it could be almost like a pathways type process. But we're still excited about what's going on in the clinical trial, which we're gonna be rolling out a full integration into um, the Epic EMR systems, which are going to allow us to create a, a broader referral system. But eventually, and this is super exciting for us later this year, we're gonna put this directly in the patient portal. So we talk about creating an ecosystem where we, you know, we bring in the sponsors, the sites, the patients and partners. But in this case here, when we put, put our application or our trial recommender application, which shows you as a patient, which trials you match into, it's going to start putting the power of, of this technology in the hands of the patients and getting us directly to the patients.